Welcome to the Construct2 Academy Introduction to Tower Defense Games. My name is Ed, and today I'm going to give you a quick overview on how to create a tower defense game with Construct2. The key things that you are going to learn in this video are the pathfinding behavior, the turret behavior, the bullet behavior, and finally the fade behavior. Alright everybody, let's get started. Hey, what's up everyone? Are you ready to get started on creating a tower defense game? Um, so just to save some time, I have everything set up. I'm just going to run you through real quick um, how I have this set up. So we have our trees, and our trees are going to kind of create our path. So we want our, our jeep to kind of follow this path around here. Um, this is our enemy jeep. Uh, this is uh, our end point here. And these craters that you see around here, that's where we're going to be able to place turrets. Um, that we will use to attack um, our wave of enemies. And then we have our, our turret base, our turret. Um, zoom in here so you can see a little bit. We have our bullet, um, our turret gun, our turret base, and then our um, explosion that's going to come out of the gun when we shoot a bullet, kind of like a little spark. Uh, and then our explosion uh, for when we hit stuff. All right, and that's all I have set up right now. I have my layers set up. I have my background, enemy, turrets, trees, and a HUD in case we need one, which I don't think we will for this um, tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and add uh, to our enemy here. We want to add the pathfinding behavior, which is this one right here with the A to the B. So pathfinding to our Jeep. All right, and you'll see several options over here for pathfinding, our cell size. Uh, that's basically how much room you have between items to where it will detect the path. So if I had this set really small, he may be, he'll try to drive between these trees. Okay, so we want to make sure we have that cell size at a good distance um, so it doesn't look too awkward. All right, and I'm going to set my obstacles to solids. You can set it to custom if you want, and then in your events, you'll, you'll set what uh what the obstacles are, but I'm going to set it to solids. I'm going to change my max speed of my Jeep to 100. All right, and everything else is going to stay the same. A rotate speed, that's how fast he'll turn as he comes around uh, the track here. Um, and whether the rotate object is whether he will rotate or not, uh, whether he'll do diagonals, and then he's going to start enabled on the pathfinding behavior. Okay, so just setting the pathfinding behavior does not do anything for us. So what we need to do is we need to come into the code here and we need to have him find the path. So we're going to click on our Jeep and we're going to find the find path. Okay. And the path that we want him to go to is to where our finish is. We want him to calculate that path. So we're going to go to finish.x and finish.y location. All right, so now on the start of the layout, our Jeep is going to find the right path, and he's going to start cruising there. After we go ahead and click our enemy, and we want to say, on path found. So when he does find the path, okay, we're going to go back to our enemy, and we want to find the move along path right here. So we're going to go ahead and move along the path. And if we go ahead and test that out real quick, we should see it happen. So you see that he went right to the pass. But hey, if you notice, he uh, drove right through all the trees, right? Well, if you remember, over here at Pathfinder, we set his obstacles as solids. So let's go ahead and click on these trees, on all of our trees, and go to the behaviors for the trees. Let's go ahead and add the solid behavior to those guys. All right, so now these are solid objects. So now this guy is going to go ahead and do his little drive. But now, look at that. He's going to find his path around the trees. He's going to cruise on right to the finish line. How about that? All right. So now the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, put in our, our turrets. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add the mouse object. Okay. We're going to say mouse and on object clicked, left click, 
we click on the turret maker, turret marker, sorry about that, uh, we want to create our turret. So when we click on that, we're going to go ahead and have our create our marker. We're going to have it spawn another object, and that object's going to be the turret base on layer turrets at image point zero. All right, and then once that spawns, we're going to have our turret spawn another object and our gun. On layer turrets at image point zero and then we're going to go ahead and destroy our turret marker okay so right now as we run this we should be able to spawn some turrets of course we're not going to do anything right now okay that's our next part so if we'll come in here we're going to go ahead and click on our gun and if you'll notice, I have a second image point set up called shoot, which is at the tip of the gun. Okay, and then the origin, I have it where I want this guy to best rotate from. So the center of the circle, not actually the center of the, the object. All right, and we're going to go ahead and give him the turret behavior, which is right down here. All right, we're going to change his range a little bit. Uh, his rate of fire at one, we'll leave that alone. It is going to rotate. Um, he's going to rotate it, let's say at 200, a little bit faster. Um, target mode, so first in range means the first guy that he sees, he's going to keep targeting until he's out of range. And nearest means um, he's just going to keep switching his targeting to the nearest um, bad guy to him. Uh, predictive aim will attempt to uh, shoot ahead of the target to try to have the target run into the bullet. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to yes. Uh, my projectile speed, that's a little fast. Let's try that at 300. And initial state is going to be enabled. Okay, so now we have a turret, but currently he's not shooting anything. So what we want to do is we want to go on our gun and we want to say on shoot, okay, we want to spawn a bullet. So gun is going to spawn another object. We're going to spawn our bullet on layer turrets at image point shoot. If you remember, we set up that image point, the second image point, to where the bullet will shoot from. Okay? Now, of course, our bullet is doing nothing right now. So I'm going to click on our bullet, which you can hardly see. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There's our bullet. And we are going to add the bullet behavior right here. All right. And we're going to leave all this alone because the speed is actually going to come from the turret, not from uh, the actual bullet. So now we have our bullet behavior. The last thing we need to do is we need to tell the turret who his objects are, what, what it's shooting at. Okay. So we can do that right here where we created the turret. Let's go ahead and click on our gun. We want to say, add an object to the target. And our object is going to be the enemy Jeep. And now let's try out this layout. I'm going to add some guns, and you can see they are shooting at them. Might be kind of hard to see, so let's increase our bullet size just a little bit. So it's a little easier to see. There we go. Now the last thing I want to do real quick is I promised you the fade behavior. So we're going to take our spark from our gun. And we're going to give it the fade behavior. And we're going to have it fade out after 0.25. Okay, and what we're going to do is right here when we shoot a bullet, uh, I'm sorry, when we shoot a bullet, we're going to have our gun spawn another object. He's going to spawn the gun blast on layer turrets 
at image point shoot again we'll do it in that order and then what this is going to happen is this is going to automatically fade out and destroy after it shoots so you see a little burst of, of shooting as it comes out okay and that's the real basics and then we'll get into more a bit later thank you